I want to talk about three concepts that I really try to keep at the front of my mind as I do home theater and audio video things in this hobby. And those three concepts are simplicity, value, and consistency. Let's break, break those down. So I find home theater to be a really interesting hobby. It's definitely one where one can get sucked in to just an absolutely massive degree of of depth and I enjoy it. I, I buy a lot of stuff. I, I have a lot of things kind of set up and, and, and tinker around with a variety of elements of home theater. But at the same time, I always try to keep ideas of simplicity, value, and consistency at the forefront of my mind when I'm researching things and when I'm actually trying to make a decision. So I want to I want to talk about those concepts and maybe how their their ideas that might help you in your home theater journey. When we talk about simplicity, I think this is a hobby that it's really easy to get to, to lose the concept of the of the forest through the trees, right? Getting getting too swept in and constantly tinkering and constantly like over investing the amount of time for the value that that time provides back in terms of actual real impactful performance and operation and and those types of ideas and so i really try to draw a lot of lines in the things that i do um, i don't run a mini dsp on top of my anthem processors because i feel like anthem arc does so much and it does it really well why do i want to spend the time spend the hours you know spend that extra complexity i haven't gone to the point of adding video processors and stuff to my setup yet although that's something i'm going to be evaluating quite a bit more coming up because again it's something else it's a lot more dials to turn and i'm very happy with the performance that i get out of my system with what the projector um, and and the existing equipment um, itself does i didn't try to piecemeal together an automation system and a control system i went with control 4 dealer supported a platform of automation specifically managed and built with all of its supported devices it's not ad hoc it's not piecemeal you know in the past getting out of ripping disks and setting up the local media servers although i am back into that a little bit right now and instead moving towards kaleidoscape where i can just buy a movie download it get that quality and watch it without the extra overhead without the extra complexities and so my my recommendation and and, and i don't always follow this one this is probably one that I break the most uh, for myself, which is get, getting things over, com overly complex or changing things. But yeah, life is better in this hobby, I think, when you really try to keep the, uh, the, an idea of simplicity at the forefront uh, of what you're doing. And I, I've done it so many times, and I, I imagine other folks can sympathize, right, where you end up, you end up spending more time messing with the stuff than you do actually enjoying the stuff. I can't say how many other folks in this hobby that I've spoke to that have uttered kind of that same phrase and you know feeling relieved when they actually back off pushing on their complexity of what they're doing in their sims and their systems instead trying to keep the idea of simplicity at a forefront and contentment and actually en just enjoying stuff and enjoying the content rather than constantly tinkering it's a hard one to do hard for me probably hard for a lot of us yeah draw those lines and really think about Think about this concept strongly as, you know, particularly if you're just getting into this hobby, because it's very easy to get sucked in reading forums and, and all the information that's out there and so many options, so many ways to do stuff, so many brands, so many devices, you know, but don't lose the concept of what your goals are and the value of keeping simplicity at the forefront. The second major concept that I really try to focus on myself is value basically value for the money spent. This is an expensive hobby. There's all kinds of different items available do, that do different things in our systems across a wide spectrum of price points. I don't. I have, thankfully, uh, the ability to put a good amount of money into this hobby, but I don't have unlimited funds. My purchases, I still want to very much maintain the highest amount of value that I can, meaning I want the most features, the most quality, the most performance for every dollar that I spend. And sometimes I have made some decisions where I put more money into something where maybe it wasn't the right kind of intersection of the price versus value chart. Buying a 3090 Ti, you know, was certainly that. I feel good about other other purchases 
that I've made. And understanding that when you're looking at something, a strata of options, a range of options, you know, for a processor, for a receiver, for a television, there's the pinnacle models, the highest end models, there's the lowest end models. And generally speaking, I've found in my time that the most value is kind of right in the middle there. So if you're looking at something, right, and, and a manufacturer makes Model A, Model B, Model C, that B is, is very often th the sweet spot. Now, I very much would have liked to have an AVM90 versus an AVM70, but I don't need the couple of extra features that the 90 adds, and, and theater and gaming is more of a, a the purpose of my theater for me rather than music. So, you know, I saved the money. I still spent into an Anthem, but I didn't go all the way to the 90 you know, at, at least yet. Um, when I bought my Kaleidoscape, really, really thought about, you know, how much how much hard drive storage do I really need? Knowing that I can download a movie in 10 minutes, do I need 18 terabytes? Do I need 24? Do I need all my movies stored locally? No, I really don't. And I found six terabytes to be a little constraining. I wanted a little more than that. So 12, you know, 12 has been kind of the sweet spot for me. It's hard to talk about a value purchase when it comes to something you know, I know is expensive as a Kaleidoscape. But it really applies to everything at all uh, at all levels, right? Levels of spending. So I find a lot of, of solace in really focusing on the on the value of what I'm shopping, the value of what I'm comparing, and understanding the idea that the cheapest thing is not always the highest value. If a lot of times in home theater, if you go too cheap, you might find yourself limited or regretful of that purchase, and so you might be more inclined to end up selling that thing. And upgrading again later so so sometimes value doesn't mean always buy the least expensive thing if you're going to turn that over and be wasteful right replacing it or such in the process and understand that at the high end of this hobby it is absolutely diminishing returns and you're spending a lot to get smaller step functions in performance and quality and and thus value so second concept there something that i really try to balance myself of and the last thing i'll say about value in this hobby particularly is shop used and you might be really surprised kind of what you can find um, in terms of refurbs accessories for less uh, buying from other enthusiasts that are that are flipping equipment and changing things out i've had some excellent excellent used purchases um, in my time even in fact now my anthem str was a used purchased off of avs forum saved me a couple thousand bucks it's running great works awesome effectively brand new and then the other kind of virtue, home theater virtue, that I really try to maintain, and I think this is probably the one that I'm best at, is the idea of consistency. I like to find brands, deliver features that work great, that deliver what I'm looking for, and I, t I tend to kind of stick with stuff. Um, I do my proper analysis, right, when, it, when new models come out, okay, is this, is, is, have they fallen off, right? Is something that, something that was good in one generation may not be, as as good in the next generation of their products and so on but uh, room to room generation to generation when i have need to upgrade things when i find stuff that i like and i have very specific reasons to identify why i like it i really tend to stick with stuff control four on the automation side triad for uh, some integrated integrated speakers and processing i stuck with focal from my home theater 1.0 to my 2.0 I, I liked the AVM70 so much um, in Anthem that I, I wanted parallel equipment, right? The STR, I'm using those Parasound amplifier channels through, through multiple zones, um, Apple devices all around in the household. When you stick to a virtue of consistency around your equipment, it makes a lot of decisions, I think, a lot easier. It takes a lot of stress out of the idea of analysis, right? All, else, all, all things being generally equal, trying to think really hard between uh, device A or device B, and you can factor it that I've used this in the past, I had a good experience, I liked it, I'm familiar with it, maybe the family is already familiar with it as well, they know how it works, they know how it operates, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that, right? If, if they're using the, you're upgrading TVs and you're going from a TV generation to a TV generation, and everybody's used to the, to the LG interface or the Sony interface, and you go flipping brands, you're gonna frustrate <laughs> potentially that significant other you're going to frustrate other members of the household. So if there's not a compelling reason, consistency might be the one to just go ahead and stick 
stick with those brands. Stick with stick with what you know. Stick with what you like. Stick with what you vetted out for yourself and stick with what you're familiar with. So as you're evaluating stuff, three home theater virtues that I try to keep front and center in my mind, simplicity, value, and consistency. I'm really curious to know how you base your decisions when you change things, when you buy things, when you upgrade things. Do you have any kind of home theater virtues that are the basis of, of guiding you through through this hobby and how you do it and how you execute your decisions and do your analysis and all of that? Sound off in the comments and, and let me know. Share the thoughts for, for others to read. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, look down in the description. There's a whole bunch of ways to support the channel. Thank you so much if you would. And otherwise, come on back for more home theater discussions, musings, and fun.